Welcome back. This is your second video for um, this year's biology at Williams Montessori. Um, today we're going to talk about how to define life. Um, before we get started, um, just a reminder that any videos that are embedded within the PowerPoint will be also linked through the class website. Um, so be sure to watch those um, after you um, watch this PowerPoint so that you are prepared for class. So today we're looking at how to define life. So how do we know something alive? So as biologists, they have um, various ways that we can say that something alive. But first, what is a biology? So biology is the study or ology of life, bio, and it includes many different branches, um, biochemistry, you know, uh, molecular biology, lots of different branches, and um, we'll learn more about those throughout the year. So biologists, organize living things into kingdoms. And so there are currently six kingdoms. We have the RK bacteria, which are um, an example is your extremophile bacteria. Those are um, special bacteria that are found in like um, deep ocean vents um, that live at extreme temperatures, thus the name extremophile. Extreme and phile means love. If we're learning about our uh, uh, prefixes and um, pro affixes, um, extremophile, they live in extreme situations, um, and they fall into the kingdom of RK bacteria. Then we have U bacteria, that's your typical bacteria from everything that's good, that li like living in your gut, to bad as giving you an ear infection, um, or you know all those different bacteria that live out in the world. Um, next kingdom is Protista. Um, you see uh, seaweeds, amoeba, and slime mold. Um, slime mold would be found in like a, a creek or, well, wouldn't be a good thing in a creek, but it would be found in um, like in um, standing water, for example. Then we have our fungi, which are yeast, mushrooms, and mold, um, other types of mold. Then we have the plantae kingdom, which is your mosses, your ferns, your hollies, your oak trees, your shrubs, your flowers, all those things fall in your kingdom plantae. And then kingdom animalia, which are your fish, your fro birds, frogs, humans, you know, all those things that you've learned about so far in your science education. So uh, how do we know something's alive? So we have the characteristics of life. And here's a video that you'll need to go and watch, but we can, we have a sense of organization. So organization, of course, is one of the ways that we can determine if something is alive. Everything is made of atoms and elements, whether it's alive or not alive. Um, you've learned about the atoms and the elements in the periodic table in eighth grade, um, and you should be familiar with that. Then atoms combine to make molecules. Okay, so we have sodium chloride, which is made of sodium and chlorine. And that is our table salt. Then we have cells. At the level of cells is when we first consider something as alive. Okay, so a rock is made up of atoms, elements, and molecules, but it does not have cells, therefore it is not alive. It does not reach that, reach that level of organization. Cells then organize into tissues, which organize into organs. All right, so we have muscle cells that end up making muscle tissues that end up making organs such as the stomach. Organs organize into organ systems. The stomach is part of the digestive system. And then all the systems come together and they make an organism such as us human beings or homo sapiens. All right, another thing. All living things have, need to have six essential elements, okay? They have to have carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur, or CH NOPS, or however you want to remember, uh, CH NOPS, okay? Um, you need to know that carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur are essential elements for life. There are plenty of other elements that are necessary for humans to live, but for all living things, they need those six elements elements, okay? Then, okay, all living things are made up of cells. There's two types. You can have unicellular, meaning they're made up of one cell. So your examples are your amoeba, your bacteria, and your paramecium. Those are three things you saw in middle school. Um, you looked at them under a microscope. Um, and then we have multicellular organisms, which are made up of many cells, and those would be your plants and your animals, okay? And look at the cute kitty cat. 
All right. Next, we have to talk about energy use. All organisms need to be able to build molecules or synthesize them or synthesize to store energy and to make energy, and they need to be able to digest molecules, okay, to break them down and to use that energy, okay? Some animals can't really build their own sugars or energy molecules. Um, like plants, we know, can make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. They take in light energy, carbon dioxide, water, nitrogen, and they give off oxygen. And in that process, they make sugars, fructose, uh, glucose, those things. And then we consume things, okay? We either consume plants or we consume consume animals that have consumed plants and we break down digestive substances and we build them into new molecules a, a particular molecule called a, called a adenosine triphosphate which you'll learn about later this year which is a storage system um, for how we're going to use that energy later on we can also convert that tri uh, adenosine triphosphate into things such as fats to store energy but energy use is essential for something to be alive, okay? Organisms have to be able to transport these nutrients and the energy, okay, for cellular respiration or the energy processes to occur, okay? And human beings, most of our energy use reactions, okay, occur in our liver, but we don't function solely in our liver, okay? That energy has to get to places such as our heart, our brain, our muscles. So that is a transportation of nutrients. So we have a transportation system for doing that. Okay, and we've learned, you've also learned about that in eighth grade um, science. Okay, and the summation, all of those reactions, all the chemical reactions that come together for the energy use, whether it's making foods, breaking them down, transporting them. It's called your metabolism. We hear about that all the time in diet commercials, like I have a slow metabolism. I have a fast metabolism. Metabolism is simply say, is the sum of all those chemical reactions that are essential for energy use, okay? You actually have a really efficient metabolism if you have stored a lot of fat, okay, and you're not using a lot of energy, okay, so you have an efficient metabolism. So metabolism has, is really about the chemical reactions. All right, what's the next thing for knowing that something's alive? Reproduction, of course, okay. Organisms must be able to replace themselves so that the species can survive, okay. All right, we can do this in two ways. We can do it asexually, okay? This would be like your bacteria that divide by mitosis, or um, if you take some um, corals and stuff and you just chop them up, they make all new org they make new organisms by just splitting them. All right, and then you have sexual reproduction, which is what humans do and what most animals do. But there are some animals, um, sponges and um, I believe starfish, that can reproduce by both asexual and sexual reproduction. Um, but mammals um, all reproduce by sexual reproduction, which um, means that two individuals contribute the genes. All right, what's the next thing for knowing something's alive? growth and development. We can't stay the same. We have to increase in size, increase the number of cells if we're a multicellular organism, okay? And we have to develop. We have to have changes take place in structure and function during the life cycle to know it's alive. So we've got this awesome picture here, okay? And it shows the beginnings of the hands and the feet at seven weeks gestation. Um, that is very, very early on. Um, a lot of women will not even know that they're pregnant at that point. But at seven weeks gestation, you are already seeing the beginnings of the hands and the feet. Now, can you tell which one's the hand and the foot? If I didn't give you those 13 week pictures, probably not. But by 13 weeks, you can clearly tell which are the hands and which are the feet. Um, and I love how you see the progression in the feet from not even from nine weeks to 13 weeks. Um, it's a very quick change, but they start out very similar. But we are increasing in size and we're changing in structure and function. 
All right, next thing is we have to respond to stimuli, okay? Responding to a stimulus. That is a quick, non-permanent change, okay, to a stimulus, something that happens around us, causes our organism to react. So we have here a picture of a little dog hiding on the covers um, because of a loud noise, you know, Fourth of July is terrible for dogs, but and they go and hide, but they are responding to a stimulus, okay? Their stimulus, that sound of the fireworks, and their response is to go and hide because that's scary. Next thing. All right. We have to be able to adjust to our environment. So we have to maintain something called homeostasis. Home, homeo, same, stasis, life, okay? Right, and so that is the regulation of our internal environment. Okay, so that we can stay healthy and stay um, good. So we get rid of waste by excretion. So excretion, we have here as excretion of sweating. Okay, when you're overly hot, your body lets off a salt solution onto your skin that evaporates and helps cool the body. Other forms of excretion, um, urination and bowel movements. So we have to excrete those wastes so that we can maintain um, homeostasis and our kidneys play a huge role in homeostasis. Next thing. An adaptation, though, is not a response to a stim stimulus or maintaining homeostasis. It's a change in the structure or an internal process that allows us to better survive in the environment. Fish, okay, their gills have adapted so that they can breathe underwater. They, um, and there's lots of different things that have changed. Okay, so an adaptation is a change in a structure, behavior, or internal process so that we can survive in a particular environment. Um, when we learn about Dalton's um, birds and how their beaks are all different to, based on what they eat, that is an example of adaptation um, to better survive their environment. All right, so how are we supposed to remember all of these things? Well, we have a Lucky for you, we have a lovely little acronym here, STERNGER, all right? S stands for synthesis, making materials. T stands for transport, moving materials. E stands for excretion, getting rid of waste. R stands for respiration, gas exchange, and the production of energy or adenosine triphosphate, ATP. N stands for nutrition, gaining and using energy from food. G, growth and development, getting bigger and or changing. R, regulation, which is controlling our internal processes. And last, reproduction, production of new cells or new organisms, Sternger. So I look forward to talking to you more about Sternger in class. All right, be sure to go back and watch any linked videos and have a great day.